Well, here we are. It's August, late summer, and just about seeding time for most of us across the nation. As the temperatures start coming down, it's making it much easier to seed. Now, one of the biggest questions I've been getting, emails, chats, etc., is how are you liking that Berenbrug RPR or their creeping ryegrass? Well, it's not only creepy, it's amazing. April of 2021, I decided I want to do something completely different. I moved into this house about four years ago and the lawn was a mess. We had kind of a mutt version of Kentucky bluegrass. No clue what variety was in there, or what wasn't in there. It had a ton of thatch, but I was able to fix that in about a year and a half. I took it from zero to hero. And then after that, I started thinking, you know what? I've never had the pleasure of perennial ryegrass. So I took a dive, completely killed off the entire lawn and decided that it was time for something new. So over the last year and four months, I've been playing with this Berenbrug perennial ryegrass and for the most part, been pretty happy with it. But today we're gonna to talk about what I've been really happy with, what I'm not so happy with, how far I was able to push it, disease tolerance, drought tolerance, let's go. Now there was a number of reasons why I chose to go with the Berenbrugs regenerating perennial ryegrass over other species of rye. Number one, the overall ratings for this species of ryegrass for overall health were really, really good. And that's something that I've struggled with with my bluegrass in the past, with melting out, leaf spot, blight, a little bit of Ascochita fungus, etc., dollar spot. I just wanted to see how this would react by comparison. Now this RPR out of the box is not a natively dark green grass. However, it is super soft and inviting on the feet. And I dare say it's the most inviting on the feet out of all the grass types I've ever set my feet on. Now, don't let the lighter color scare you away. This grass soaks and reacts to liquid products like iron, fungicides, biostimulants like I've never seen before. You'll start seeing results after one treatment within about five days, and it gets just as dark after an iron treatment as my Kentucky bluegrass does. Number two, it's rated to create less thatch over a period of time than other species. And that's also been problematic with the species of blue that I had. Now on the top layers of the thatch, I like to remove those with a dethatcher or a scarifier so I can get the grass to kind of lay to and fro whichever way I like and lay those incredible stripes. Now the best part about both of these species that I have is they are regenerating or kind of self-repairing when you damage them. Meaning if you get a section of dead grass, bluegrass has rhizomes that will creep through, form new blades of grass, and rye has a subsurface um, stolen that basically creeps and forms new leaf blades as well. I would say that the regenerating rye grass works about 80% to the capacity of the blue. The blue is more aggressive. It creeps further through the lawn where the rye is known to go about eight inches in one solid circle. I've tested this over and over and over. And I can tell you after about a four month period, my best guess is I've seen it go anywhere between two and three inches in diameter. Uh, I've got some tough spots that you can check in previous videos where I did zero treatments whatsoever, no reseeding, no nothing, and you can see that it grew back. I tested this with the bluegrass in this yard, same way where I left a, geez, it was almost like a three feet by one foot wide section just to see how long and how fast it would grow. And over the entire season, I wanna say I got about six inches out of it now this is what makes this grass incredibly thick by comparison to some of the other species and the other nice thing about it is you don't have to overseed year after year when you get thin spots which is also really nice now one of the biggest questions that i always get is how does this rye grass compare to kentucky blue so my blue grass is actually at about two inches, maybe two and a half inches, where my rye I've got at about an 
inch or as low as the mower will go, maybe an inch and a quarter. Now, I'm not too sure you guys are actually gonna be able to tell the difference, but there is a transition point, right? I've got the ryegrass here. I've got the bluegrass here. And the actual overall thickness of the blade of grass, you notice the blade thickness is just very, very different. The ryegrass, however, is much more porous than the bluegrass, which makes the ryegrass softer. It makes it lay flatter as well. So you notice a little bit of blade difference, but there's really no difference on the rhizomes, how tight or thick this bluegrass is compared to the rye. Now I'm sure you're getting a good idea that the bluegrass is still an amazing choice. Now there's a bunch of things that I really love about my bluegrass. Number one, taller, it looks amazing. Way better in my opinion than the perennial ryegrass at two inches to two and a half inches. The thing about the bluegrass is it has a tendency to lift up a little bit easier because of the density of the blade than the ryegrass does. So if your whole thing is, is you like longer species of grass, I'd stick with the blue. Uh, when it comes to drought tolerancy, let's kind of get into this. Drought tolerancy for me isn't using less water to keep it green necessarily. It's to the point where you can take it to death and bring it back. Now I hammered both of these. And I must say that the bluegrass wins with drought tolerancy because I can take bluegrass and I can really stress it out with water or I can have a section of my lawn go without water and have it go brown and I can still bring it back within a period of about three weeks of it going brown. Now with the RPR is a totally different story. When I drought stress, I drought stress it on accident for about a week. It had about 25% of the water that it needed. I was vacationing, didn't realize that our temps went from 60 degrees on up to 90 degrees for a week. So it was only getting 25% of the water that it needed, came back, still looked really good, but after I cut it, it went brown and it took, man, it was about two weeks really to get it out of its funk in some areas. It took me a week really just putting down some biostimulants like Essentials Plus 101 uh, and some sea kelp and some calcium to really get it back out. But I still have sections of the lawn, uh, one right here, one right there, and I've got one right here that have not grown back and did not go green again. So recovery definitely goes to bluegrass. So if you're a person that neglects your lawn every now and then, bluegrass is still gonna be king. Here, this is a rotary cut. I really wanted to give you guys a bird's eye view. I'm mowing this about every five days is all. It keeps really nice. You can see Royce absolutely loves this lawn, as do my kids. So if you still want that short mow look, you can rotary this, no problem. Now. Keep in mind though, I've done the exact same thing to my bluegrass, had zero issues as long as the mower was sharp. I would like to point out that it was easier to mow the rye at this height than it was the blue because it's just not as dense, which is why I don't like rye taller than about an inch and a half because it tends to mat down a little bit. Now I know a lot of you guys out there are dying to know how does it do in the heat? Well. I'm here to tell you that this year, Salt Lake City had record-breaking temps for most consecutive days over 90 degrees, record-breaking. Um, and you can see my lawn is perfect. I'm not over-watering it, I'm not doing anything overly special that one would think I am. The only thing I really focused on is making sure that my sprinkler coverage was on point and it was being watered consistently per week to keep up with evaporation. Now, the one thing that I absolutely love about the ryegrass is it reacts to fertilizer treatments, fungicides, whatever treatment that you're going to put down, it hits fast. I can see results within about five days of the application where my bluegrass, it'd be about two to three weeks. 
I attribute that to the porosity of the leaf blades. Circling back to the issue with the heat. I live in an area, I live in Utah, central Utah. We do not get a ton of humidity. Um, I want to get into talking about the transition zones. But I'm gonna let my buddy from the Lawn Shark take that over so you get a bird's eye view of exactly what his experience was in these types of zones. What's going on, Ginger? Thanks for reaching out to me and asking me about my experience with uh, printing ryegrass here in the Nashville area. For those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Dino and I am the Lawn Shark. I live in Nashville, Tennessee. I actually live in Franklin, which is about 14 miles south of Nashville. And we live right in the middle of the transition zone. So the whole story starts back in the fall when I decided to do a complete lawn renovation. I had owned this house for about six months and it was pretty much a mess. We had regraded everything. We had decided that we were gonna kill everything off and that we were gonna start over. I know that perennial ryegrass is really meant for the cold weather. And so this was a complete experiment. At the time, I gave it about a 75% chance of actually succeeding. What we decided to do was to go with the Baron Brug perennial ryegrass RPR. We did a lot of work to get this lawn ready for that. We put in a bunch of compost, a bunch of sand, we really tilled it in, leveled it off, and put it down. And I have to say that the immediate results of the Berenbrug RPR were fantastic. We were able to see germination within four days and the grass really took off, especially up in the front. Overall, we had great success. It germinated quickly and it came in really thick. So as you fast forward a little bit, we go into November where I had a knee replacement and that put me out of commission for about four months. And even with me not being able to do anything in lawn, I did nothing to the lawn for about four months and it actually thrived. The perennial ryegrass came in thick. It was looking really good. Spring comes around, things start warming up and you start seeing that RPR really take off and really thicken up. And we were super happy with the results. So in the spring, things are looking really good. And really the only thing that I was really concerned about was the fact that my wife and I decided to do the landscaping for this hill right here. And that created a concern for me because I thought that we were gonna have a lot of trampling and I was worried about all that traffic on this brand new grass. But to be honest with you, the Berenbrug really held up nicely. It was growing so fast that even with all that foot traffic, it was doing just fine. So the landscaping project was over, everything was great. And then of course, what do I decide to do in the beginning of June? I go on vacation. And in that time, the temperatures went from 85 degrees, low 80s, mid 80s, all the way up to 100 degrees while I was gone. One of the things you have to understand about the transition zone is that the temperatures will fluctuate here from really cold winters all the way up into the hundreds at times here in the Nashville area. So you always have that concern of what's gonna happen. But here it happens super fast. Again, it went from mid 80s all the way up to 100 degrees and it stayed there. While I was gone, I'm checking my security cameras back here. I'm actually talking to my daughter who was taking care of the lawn while I was gone. And we were really concerned that we were gonna start having issues. And sure enough, we started seeing some really big brown patches, especially right behind me, which is where we get a lot of direct sun. I get back from vacation and of course I had done all the things that I needed to do which was to make sure that I had fed the lawn before I left, I had mowed the lawn, it was in really good shape but nothing could prepare me for the amount of heat that we had. Not only did we have temperatures in the hundreds throughout the time that I was gone but they continued into the mid to upper 90s for the next several weeks and that was when things really started to take a turn for the worse. We weren't just going into a dormancy, we were going into a dead zone. And that's pretty much where we ended up. Unfortunately, one of the things that I learned about perennial ryegrass the hard way is that irrigation, while it is a good factor to help you, it is not going to fix all your issues. The temperatures in the hundreds and the humidity levels that were in the upper double digits of like, you know, 85 plus percent really wasn't gonna fix anything. One of the things that I would say about perennial ryegrass, it is an amazing seed. It looks great, it cuts well, it stripes fantastic but it does not like the heat. I hope that helps. I hope that answers everybody's questions as far as what happens with perennial ryegrass here in the transition zone. I love the grass. It was an experiment. I gave it a 75% chance of success. I can't really say that it was 100% failure because I do think that it does well for three seasons. It's just not gonna do well for that fourth season, which is the summertime. And if you have any questions, let me know. Now, when it comes to shade tolerance, this needs a solid four to six hours, no questions asked, just like most species of bluegrass. These type species that I'm using from Berenbrug are not shade tolerant species. I've tried it, it failed miserably. <laughs> it doesn't want to creep or crawl, it needs sunlight. 
So one of the major concerns that I had was, is it traffic tolerant? And the short answer is, yeah, absolutely. I've got three very active boys. They play football with their cleats on it. They do gymnastics, doing backflips, all sorts of flips I can't even pronounce these days that these kids are doing. Very tolerant. Matter of fact, I put in a 16 station splash pad called the Gopher Geyser uh, that comes through and mists water up. Uh, during the hot summer days, the neighborhood kids and my kids like to get on this thing and really hammer it. And I really haven't had any problems. Most I've really had to do was do my regular fertilizing. I'm not doing too much special to this grass. If you live in an area that commonly has cool season grasses like perennial rye, turf type tall fescue, or Kentucky bluegrass, it is a fantastic option, especially if you want that clean look at an inch and a quarter to an inch. If you want to reel mow it, you can absolutely do that. I was able to reel mow this comfortably all the way down to about uh, 0.65 of an inch without causing too much stress. Whereas my bluegrass, anytime I got below uh, three quarters, it took work to keep it green. But if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, hit me up in the comments down below. You know, I'd love to help you guys out. Till next time, guys, testing lawn, Jija. We're slaying lawns.